to start off with, I'm going to say that this video was inspired by the fact that there is a Frank Lloyd Wright house on the market in Minnesota. You may have seen this if you follow me on Twitter. I don't think I've ever been to Minnesota, but the house is only $1.4 million and I'm considering it. That realization led to me falling down a bit of a rabbit hole of looking at pretty pictures of Frank Lloyd Wright houses and designs and buildings and other things. And that made me realize through talking to some people on Twitter and in real life that not everybody knows who's, who Frank Lloyd Wright is. And that's a little surprising to me because I feel like I've always known who he is. We went to go see house tours and things of Frank Lloyd Wright houses uh, ever since I was really little. I wanted to make a video just doing a little bit of explanation. Why does this guy who would be over a hundred years old now, if he was still alive, matter? When I was a kid, my family would take tours of Frank Lloyd Wright houses and I was always really fascinated by the way that they made me feel. Um, because architecture is a lot more important than people realize. It affects you and how you move about in a space a lot more than we think it does when we're just thinking of like, oh, I need a place to live, like I need a place to work. We don't really think about how the design of that space can change the way that we interact with it and can improve the quality of our life in some ways or potentially um, degrade that quality. That's a strong word. I don't quite know what other word to use though. A well-designed building takes into account um, how it will be used, by whom it will be used, um, where it's going to exist in the world, like what climate and things like that, but also the specific location that it is going to be built on. And Frank Lloyd Wright is kind of considered to be one of the fathers of the modern architecture, uh, specifically of organic architecture, green architecture, and environmental architecture. A lot of what we do now uh, how we build homes and how we think about things being used is based, at least in part, on Frank Lloyd Wright and how he built his houses, uh, office buildings, the whole works. But Frank Lloyd Wright built all sorts of different things. Um, he built really famous houses and museums, office buildings, and hotels. He also built more obscure things like gas stations and banks and like temples or churches and things like that. So really he kind of built whatever people wanted him to build. Wright started in architecture drafting buildings for Louis Sullivan. He eventually became Louis Sullivan's assistant in Chicago. And Louis Sullivan was kind of the inventor of the skyscraper. And his motto, as it were, was form follows function. So Frank Lloyd Wright took that and took it to like the next level. He based every design decision on what it would look like and how it would be used practically. The result of this is beautiful living spaces, workspaces, uh, galleries, places of worship, everything that flow from inside to outside really well, uh, that just seem to fit in with the place that they are built into. He's definitely known best for his residential architecture. He started by building houses in Chicago and the Chicago suburbs and then carried that out throughout his career even while he was taking huge commissions in Japan and New York and all over the world 
he would also be taking on individual family homes and apartment buildings, smaller things like that. His buildings often kind of fade into the background of the places that they're built in, and that's because he chooses both materials that he's using and like structural design features based on specifically where a building is in the world. His most famous house is Falling Water, which continues the like piers of a waterfall and is built on top of a waterfall. Um, that's one that you can tour. Uh, but it was also seen in things like a long, low to the ground house in Chicago where everything is flat or choosing to use gray sandstone and like simple wood structure for a house in Phoenix where you're surrounded by desert. Frank Lloyd Wright is the father of organic architecture he is still the, the most influential architect of probably the last hundred years, even though he's been dead for the last 60. Um, a lot of the concepts of structure and design that he uses in his buildings are used now in green architecture and environmental architecture. I haven't even mentioned his, like, batshit crazy personal life, okay? Dude married this girl at 22 and has six kids, totally normal for the time, a little bit weird now, and they're married for 20 years and then all of a sudden he just, like, ups and runs off with this mistress, the wife of a client, and they go and live in Germany for a couple years because he's running away from his world, comes back to the United States, he builds the mistress a mansion in Wisconsin, still working in Chicago, and like, then the mistress gets brutally murdered. Like, what? <laughs> Eventually, divorces his first wife, marries two other women, not at the same time, and like, even after all of this, he still is buried next to the mistress. Are you kidding me? Like, what? So obviously, this is a really cool dude, and I like his work a lot. A little bit problematic on the personal front. Who isn't? But the other thing that is becoming somewhat problematic is uh, a lot of his houses now are uh, having some issues. Since Frank Lloyd Wright was constantly innovating using new materials and new types of design, uh, a lot of stuff was untested and that would lead to problems that you really wouldn't find out about until after construction was completed. There would be leaky roofs or cracks in the walls, that sort of thing, and a lot of his buildings and homes are now in disrepair or just require a lot of upkeep, more so than other homes that were built around the same time. Wright was also really, really particular about the way that people lived in his houses. Um, he would often design a lot of the furniture that got used in houses. He would design a lot of things as built-in bookcases, couches, chairs even, and he was known for randomly checking up on the families that lived in his houses to make sure that they were still using the things the way that he wanted them to be used. So, a little bit weird, a little bit, like, overbearing. So Wright lived until he was 91, and he was working all the way up until his death. In fact, there were a few houses, buildings, things that were not completed until after his death in 1959. 
I could talk about Frank Lloyd Wright for hours uh, and go into lots and lots of detail even on some specific houses that I've been to and that I love a lot, but this video is definitely long enough already, so I'm going to end it here. Um, I hope this has been entertaining, <laughs> because obviously it was very entertaining for me to make. Um, and if you like it, give it a thumbs up, just so that I know that this was interesting to people, um, and not just, like, interesting to me. Uh, maybe I'll make more stuff like this in the future. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. Not all of these videos, not all of my videos are like this, but, uh, some of them can be sometimes. Uh, I, I don't know. Subscribe. Or don't. I don't own you. Um, as always, I hope you get a chance to do something that you love today, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.